Today Theresa and I have come to Bristol to visit the famous SS Great Britain. Built in 1843, the masterpiece of the world's greatest engineer, Isambard Kingdom Brunel, this was the largest ship in the world at the time. One of the wonders of the industrial world. After travelling around the world almost 30 times, with a million miles at sea, she was left to rot in the Falkland Islands. In 1970, a salvage operation was made and she was safely brought back to her original birthplace in Bristol. Since then, significant restoration work has turned her into a historical museum that is rated the best thing to do in Bristol by TripAdvisor. Welcome folks, welcome to SS Great Britain. Do enjoy yourself, it's got so much to see above, below and around. Have a fantastic time. Visitors can explore its history and experience both passenger and crew conditions. And quite clearly, I wouldn't fit in one of these. <laughs> so why not join us and come aboard? I'm not in the last month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, hello and welcome to the channel. My name's Mike. And I'm Teresa, his better half. Located on the south side of the city, the nearest car park is pay and display, but the museum will reimburse part of that fee. Also be aware the museum is not usually open on Mondays, but your tickets are valid for a full year. Boarding is via the Dockyard Museum. This is full of artefacts from the ship, including graffiti from the previous crew and the original ship's rudder. I wonder what Brunel would think of the museum. These days, ultimately, it is for people to have fun. Okay. Welcome to the SS Great Britain. Please enjoy your voyage. Before boarding, you'll have to decide what character you'd like to be. Theresa was always going to be a first-class passenger. So let's see what life aboard ship would be for her. Once on deck, we quickly identified that first-class passengers had their own area of the deck and way more fun. Kites is a game in which players toss rings at a stake called the hob. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Approving the deck area, we ventured below, finding the first class passengers ate in pure luxury, with silver service, champagne glasses and fresh food. It's said that on SS Great Britain, you would eat a higher quality of food than you would eat on land. And I think somebody approves of that. <laughs> Even the toilets are posh. Finally, let's check out those sleeping quarters. Yeah, what's wrong with that cabin? Uh, the bed's too narrow. I'd fit in lengthwise, but not widthwise. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. The rooms all seem to be quite small. I have no idea what that's about. At least he can't complain.
much bigger than the beds. <laughs> Yeah, you can wash up. <laughs> the engine room comprises of two giant propeller engines with a combined weight of 340 tons. The engines rise from the keel through the three lower decks to a height just below the main deck and are capable of generating 1000 horsepower at 18 revs per minute powering a six-bladed windmill propeller of Brunel's own design, which allowed the SS Great Britain to be the first ship to cross the Atlantic with a screw propeller. This allowed the ship to cruise at 12 knots, making the journey in 30 days. Making her the grandparent of every modern, ocean-going ship in the world. What I like about the museum is that they have preserved the hull as it was found in 1970 in the Falklands. Below the waterline, they haven't given it a new lick of paint. But under a glass plate, the hull is protected in an atmospherically controlled environment. Big dehumidifiers suck water out of the atmosphere, making it as dry as the Arizona desert. Allowing visitors to literally touch and feel part of 200 years of history. But that's not my favourite part of our visit. It's just how much work is done into making the vessel feel like it's come to life. Just like taking a stroll through the steerage area. So this is what steerage is like. Definitely where Theresa and I would be. And you've got to mind your head. There we go. <coughs> Sorry, didn't mean to disturb you. He still looks half rats to me. And now he's a black eye to take to Melbourne. That's going to give you a good character. Or listening to one of the very informative Discovery Talks. The weekly rations for a passenger who was sailing to Australia in steerage. Ship's biscuits are incredibly hard. So, uh, good luck eating a limited amount of them. You've got salted meats called salt junk. There's some butter and some lard. Bulky ingredients, dried peas, oatmeal and rice. Sugar and treacle, dried raisins and your flour. Canned vegetables like potatoes. Put your tea and coffee. Not the most uh, wonderful quality tea and coffee either. So you've got your seasonings, you've got mustard powder, you've got salt and pepper, some vinegar, and then you've got your lime juice, which is incredibly important uh, for preventing scurvy. And lastly, your water ration, so around 21 quarts of water a week, which is about six pints a day. So not only has the vessel been brought back to life, but also the surrounding docks area, providing a real industrial experience, and that we were both about to embark on an ocean voyage. And as the weather took a turn for the worse, we just had time to exit via the gift shop. Oh, yes, fridge magnet. <laughs> well done. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed our little tour of the SS Great Britain. We're now back home. And Teresa, what did you enjoy about the day? I enjoyed everything, but I really enjoyed being underneath the boat and being able to actually touch it and just going back to that history and all those years. Not beating me at quotes. <laughs> well, there was that. <laughs> I mean, what a fluke that was. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's put it down as a fluke. <laughs> and what do people have to do? They have to smash the like button. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care for now. Bye. Bye. Remember, if you want to keep up to date with all of our videos, then subscribe to the channel.